What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to another one. Today we're gonna be diving into why a lot of people in the community don't tank. I wanted to talk about some of the uniqueness that ESO has when it comes to the world of tanking, kind of what tanking is, maybe if you're unfamiliar with the Holy Trinity group content and stuff like that, and then dive into, um, you know, why this is in ESO specifically. So to start off with, what is tanking? We have the Holy Trinity in the Elder Scrolls Online, right? So you have your healer, and this is for group content, right? So what that means is you have a healer, a tank, and then you have people that are doing damage, right? DPS, damage dealers, or DDs, sometimes you'll see um, in zone chat and stuff like that. And healers obviously have a pretty, I think, self-explanatory role. You're going to be healing the group, you're going to be buffing your teammates, you're going to be partially debuffing some of the enemies, but your biggest thing is keeping your group alive and buffing your teammates to make them do more damage or take less damage. Tanking, you have a variety of things that you're doing. You're organizing the fight. If you make a mistake as a tank, it's very noticeable because it can result in an entire group wipe, where if you make a mistake as a healer or you make a mistake as a damage dealer, um, it's not really as much so. It's less noticeable. Maybe you die, maybe someone else dies, but not the entire group typically, unless it's very hard content and it's, you know, a group-wide mechanic that you are doing yourself. That's totally different. Um, the other thing with tank... <clears throat> excuse me, with tanking is you are buffing your teammates to do more damage, you are debuffing the enemy so that they can take more damage, and then also, um, depending on what sets you're wearing, maybe do less damage to you and your group members. Um, you are making the enemies attack you, which is called taunting. You are holding threat on them, basically. Um, but in ESO, it's, it's very different than other games. A lot of other games... And not every game. New World has kind of a, a kind of a similar um, feeling to ESO's tanking in in terms of damage output. But in a lot of other um, MMOs, you actually you are managing threat, or you are managing basically you're basically making the enemies attack you by doing your rotation, right? But in ESO, you have specific abilities that are actually designed to taunt enemies that you are using. So you are not doing damage. ESO has this weird philosophy, it's very different from other MMOs, that they don't want you to AoE taunt. And AoE taunt means that you would have an area of effect taunt or be able to taunt several um, groups of people or several people or enemies at once. You have to single target taunt everybody that you want taunted. And so it, it makes this very interesting um, gameplay mechanic where you are not doing any DPS at all as a tank like you have very very little damage but you are managing all of these taunts and the threat of all these enemies in front of you organizing the fight and such where if you go to any other game for the most part world of warcraft final fantasy you are just doing your rotation as a tank and all of those abilities naturally generate or generate a lot more of that kind of tanky response that um that threat to enemies that make them want to attack you so it's a little bit more self-explanatory um, I think a lot of people, and now I kind of want to talk about why people don't tank. I think a lot of people, um, come from one of two places for the Elder Scrolls Online. You either come from another MMO or you come from an Elder Scrolls game. So let's start with this. With an Elder Scrolls game, maybe you have a sword and shield. Maybe you're just, you know, coming in. You want to be a tank because that's just kind of the archetype that you like. The sword and shield guy, right? Well, there are very specific kind of ways that a lot of people want you to play right and that's what's annoying so i get it i've done a lot of the harder end game content but you'll see people are generally a lot pickier about what their support group or their support players are wearing because they want them to basically support them so that the damage dealers can do as much damage as possible you are also um needing to manage taunts on everybody so it's just, it's just a little bit different. People coming from a single-player RPG, it's a little bit of a change. And then coming from another MMO where you have an AoE taunt, that's a big difference. And not doing any DPS, not being able to um, really quest efficiently, like do any overland stuff by yourself efficiently because you, do no, you, you deal no damage. You can obviously use a companion, and that makes it a little bit better. But in general, um, you know, you, you switch to a damage dealer setup when you're questing or doing overland content or solo content. You don't stay on your tank, which you can do in 
most other games, right? So when you think about the Holy Trinity, a lot of people um, are talking about this in, in regard to group content. And when you get into solo content, when you get into questing, when you do all that, which most of the player base is doing, all the kind of casual content, um, tanking's not exactly the most fun thing to do in that instance. So you're kind of pigeonholed into this one section of the game um, that it feels good to tank in, if anything. And then if you come from other MMOs, a lot of people think that it doesn't feel good to tank, right? And because tanks don't do any damage, right? If you're in a veteran dungeon and you're cruising through it and you have a couple brand new players, tanking is going to feel bad because damage is absolute king in ESO. And a lot of times it's a lot better to have a newer tank and experienced DPS. That'll make the, the runs go a lot quicker because a newer tank can learn, hey, I just need to stay alive and I need a taunt. Right. And so they can at least organize fights, learn the mechanics and stuff like that. But the run will go smoothly and quickly where if you're in like a veteran DLC dungeon and you have a couple guys that are in there light attacking with the bow 50 yards back, that's going to be a miserable dungeon. Right. So a lot is riding on the, the damage dealers in this case, um, which leads a lot of people to uh, to not tank that are experienced, in my opinion. Now, I love tanking. But I do end up, so if, I, if I'm tanking and I go into a normal trial or something like that, I think that's great. If you're doing a random normal, it's whatever. But like whenever you start doing difficult content and you get people that are not necessarily the best damage dealers, it makes it not fun, right? Because you can only sit there and taunt a boss and hold them there while the DPS light attack for so long. And then it just gets boring and you're like i wish i was doing the damage i know how to do damage i know how to do a dps rotation to make this content go a little bit faster and then like i said eso is a game about creating a variety of builds you're not going to bring your tank build into pvp you're not going to bring your tank build typically into veteran vatishran hollows or vma or when you're questing or like pretty much the rest of the game right you're only going to use it really in group content or an infinite archive so I think, you know, I think having a tank build is great, but I think all of that kind of combined, a lot of people aren't going to always want to do it, right? So let's start reading through some of these content or comments. For vet pledges, you basically have no control over who your teammates are. So you can be the best tank player in the world and still be unable to complete some dungeons if your teammates are bad. Even if your teammates are just okay, it can still take longer to get stuff done than if you just blasted through the mechanics on your own damage dealer. I totally agree. And that's what I'm saying. So if you do the vet pledges, the veteran pledges, which are the daily dungeon quests that you get at the Undaunted Enclave, and you queue up with people that you don't know, and you get damage dealers that just hit CP 160, or for the DLC dungeon, they just hit CP 300, and they still don't know how to do their rotation, they're still light attacking and using an ability once every five to 10 seconds, you know, it's going to be a miserable experience and it makes you not want to tank. It's not fun, right? It makes you want to leave. Then it's a waste of time. And then you're like, I'm going to play something else, or I'm just going to hop on my damage dealer and not play tank. Right. And it's because ESO's vision for tanks are quite literally, you are a, a, a combat dummy for the enemy, <laughs> except you are buffing your teammates and you are debuffing the enemy, but you don't contribute anything to the damage. And especially if you're on PC and you have combat metrics and you look down and you see that you are doing 25% of your group's damage as a tank, that's when you know it's very bad, right? Because your tank's typically not gonna do more than like 10K, 12K DPS, if anything. So if you're doing 25K or 25% of the damage, it's, it's rough, it's real rough. Um, also, tanking is probably the hardest role to get into vet trials with. I, honestly, what I will say is, let's let's pop back a little bit here. Going into just you know vet DLC dungeons and stuff like that, it is one of the hardest roles in general, just because you need to know the mechanics of everything you are doing because it shows when you don't. If you're not doing the mechanics, if you're not facing the boss away from the group, if you're not organizing the fight in a certain way it's going to be detrimental to the group. 
where if a DPS doesn't, usually it can be, you know, other people can do different things to make up for that, right? But when you're the tank and you don't know what's going on, it makes for a very sour time. So it is very hard. And then when you get into vet trials, it's the same thing. Anyway, since a lot of mechanical knowledge and coordination is required, most groups just ask more experienced tanks they already know, and there's way less opportunity for newer tanks to gain experience than other roles. Yeah, so eventually when you get to vet trials, the mechanics and the coordination is very in-depth. Like the, the, the scale and knowledge that you need from a normal trial to a vet trial as a tank is extensive. And so a lot of groups will just say, we don't want to go through the process of teaching a new tank how to do all these mechanics, right? It's not, it's not, it's not like rewarding enough and it's not also worth our time to do that. So then a lot of tanks don't even get to get into this and a lot of people will have an easier time getting in as a healer or a damage dealer. Um, let's continue. Uh, the pressure is also higher since the group will wipe if you make mistakes. That's what I said. Um, there are simply more slots for damage dealers as well, and they come and go from trial rosters more freely. Meanwhile, a solid damage dealer can blast through pledges quickly and gain lots of vet trial experience by just tagging along on farming runs without too much pressure. Pretty much every single experienced tank main I know just does pledges with Discord buddies who they raid with, way less plain, uh, painful. Hats off to any tank main who queues for pub dungeons, to be honest. Yeah, so... At this point, whenever I do, whenever I tank, for the most part, unless I really want to teach people mechanics and I'm going out of my way to do that, I'll usually post that in the group finder. But if I'm doing pledges, I do it with friends because I want to get my six keys and I want to finish up the pledges and move on with what I wanted to do for the day, right? And if I am pugging, it's often because, one, it's super easy and it doesn't matter like a normal trial it doesn't matter you know you just get 10 dps in there you do one tank one healer and 10 dps and it's fine there's going to be some experienced people that carry the group always um but yeah there's there's lots of times where i simply would like to hop in with a pug and teach people i think that that's pretty fun i had a better time doing that when i was on console because of the automatic kind of in-game voice chat i don't know how prevalent that is now I was doing that before Blackwood and stuff, but um, I did enjoy doing that quite a bit. Let's see what the next person says. I do tank, but only with friends and guildies. Tanking in random groups is an endless hurry to try and taunt the mob or group before the damage dealers rush in and drag everything everywhere. It's not worth the hassle. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're doing, like, a normal dungeon or something like that, a lot of times, like, you'll have, like, fake rolls and stuff like that that kind of speed ahead of you and pick up stuff because they're trying to finish quickly. Um, that's why, like, if I'm going to pug anything, I only really pug um, veteran dungeons or, like I said, normal trials um, because of that, right? The next one, which I had upvoted, you want my crappy answer because I can get a team that can't pull their weight. As a DPS, I can ensure at least half the group's damage can be brought. As a healer, I can support with damage. But as a tank, I often travel at the speed of smell in some dungeons because nobody can DPS fast enough. I just thought this was hilarious. So yeah, I mean, the big thing is whenever you queue up for a random dungeon or you queue up to be with random people, most of the time, there's not a lot of people in ESO that are what we would consider to be like very good. And that's fine. A lot of people are inexperienced and they're using the group, uh, the, the dungeon queue to get experience in dungeons and stuff. That's fantastic. But a lot of times... Um, Doing that all day, you'll do three or four dungeons and it takes you your entire playtime where you could have done that with your friends in a quarter of the time. And, you know, I don't, I know I don't have the entire day to play video games on a Monday, right? I've got this little bit of time in the morning before work to put out a video. I've got a little bit of time after work before I'm passed out, after I go to the gym, eat, visit with my wife and hang out, right? You only have so much time, so it's like, do you want to spend time slogging through a dungeon that should take 10 minutes, and it takes an hour, or 45 minutes, or do you want to just go on a damage dealer and everything go quickly, right? So I think it's, it's, it's really largely, I don't think, like in a lot of other games, you'll see people not tanking because they're intimidated by it, they don't know mechanics, 
But I think in ESO, it's a, des a, a design philosophy issue. Tanks don't do any damage. So you can't use them anywhere outside of a group. And if you are in a group that is not full of people that you know are good at what they're doing, odds are it could be a bad time. And that's not fun, right? That's not fun. So I think a lot of people um, kind of get into tanking, do it for a little bit and love it. Or you get into it and you're like, I had more fun as a damage dealer because you get a few bad apple groups. And that's what it is, right? Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys tanking? Do you guys want to get into tanking? Um, what are your pros and cons for it? I'm really curious to see if y'all are enjoying it, if you guys are tanking. Also, at the end of the video, I do want to talk about this. You may notice it's a slightly different setup. We are downsizing a little bit relatively soon. I had talked about this in a previous video. So I'm actually gaming now on a gaming laptop versus a gaming PC because we're going to have to kind of move our setup around. So my camera's kind of in a different spot than it used to be, but it's the same kind of stuff. I'm going to be doing, putting out the same videos. The orientation in the camera may look a little bit different or something like that for a little bit, but um, once I get into the new place and stuff like that, we'll be getting a nice little, a little setup. Okay. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.